And I want to invite you, um, we're going to be in different portions of the Bible, but I'm going to invite you to join me in three places. Um, first of all, John chapter 8, which is where the majority of our teaching is going to be placed in the Gospel of St. John chapter 8. And then um, I'm going to ask you to go to the first chapter of the first book of the Bible, Genesis chapter 1. John chapter 8, Genesis chapter 1, and then we're going to finish in Revelations chapter 21. Right, so John chapter eight, um, Genesis one, and Revelations chapter twenty-one. And if you join me in those three parts, you'll be in about ninety, ninety-five percent of my um, teaching this afternoon. Um, well, how many moms came last week? Do I have any moms that came last week? And you came back, man, that's a good sign, right? You know, like that. Después de la regañada que les di. No, I'm just kidding, right? Uh, anyway, I hope that they took you out to eat where you wanted to go. Last night after church, I went um, across the street to this little restaurant, and there were some uh, sisters um, uh, there at the, uh, at the restaurant. And, and I walked in there, one of them told me, Pastor, they did take me to Golden Corral. And I said, um, well, as long as that's where you wanted to go, I'm okay with that, you know. But if you didn't want to go there and they took you there, then I'm, I'm not going to be okay with that. But anyways, um, I'm glad that you guys are here. And um, two weeks ago, the week before um, we started studying, uh, before we celebrated Mother's Day, we started studying the Gospel of John. And, um, and in the Gospel of John, seven times uh, Jesus uses this phrase, I am, right? I am. Last week we saw, I am the bread, um, uh, uh, the bread of life. This week we're going to see, I am the light of the world. Now remember that the first audience that um, Jesus spoke to was, uh, they, 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 were, they, were, they were Jews, they were, they were Jewish people, he, uh, Israelites, Hebrew. And the first audience that read the Gospel of St. John were Jews. And so when they heard or read this phrase that Jesus would use, I am, their mind immediately would go back to Exodus chapter, <clears throat> uh, to, back to Exodus, where last week um, on Mother's Day, we spent a little bit time studying Exodus and we saw, um, you know, how God saved a, a, a baby boy by the name of Moses. Well, that Moses, uh, we saw that he actually was raised in um, a little bit with his uh, biological Hebrew mother, but then at a certain age was sent to his adopted mother, um, the princess, the daughter of Pharaoh, and she raised him 40 years in the palace. And then uh, a situation happened and he had to flee for his life. He goes across the desert and he spends 40 years away from Egypt. And at the age of 80, 80 years old, God tells him, go back to Egypt and free my people. And remember that it was rough in Egypt. They were killing the firstborn. They were killing the male babies. They had them as slaves, as servants. And, and Moses says, man, there's this no easy thing to do, Lord. Like you're, you're, you're asking me to do the impossible. As we saying, right? Nothing's impossible for God. And so he asked God, he's like, who do I tell them send me? When Pharaoh says, under whose authority do you come? When, when, when your people ask me, who sent you? Who do I tell them sent me? And God told him, tell them, I am sent you, right? And so when Jesus uses these phrases of I am, he's saying, you know, you know, your hero Moses, well, I am the one that sent him. I was there whenever Moses asked, who do I say sent me? And so so it's a good understanding for us to have as we read and study these next few weeks over I am. Now, I'm, I'm going to tell you, I'm, I, I know we paused last week for Mother's Day, and, and it was worth it for mothers, for the, for the moms. My mom was here, so it was worth it. But um, ne next week, I, I, we'll see what, we might take a slight pause as well next week, because um, next week, and only in the, the 10 a.m. service, at the 10 a.m. service, the, the general consul of Israel is going to come. She's going to give a speech. Um, and then we're going to pray for her and pray for, for Israel. And, um, and just to keep everything uniformed, um, um, we'll, see, we'll see what we teach next week. But then the following week, we'll get back on track. So don't worry. Anyways, uh, John chapter 8, verse 12. Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness, 
because you will have the light that leads to life. If you're the type that marks your Bible, this is a good verse for you to mark in your Bible if you've never marked it. I am the light of the, light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. Verse 13. The Pharisees replied, you are making those claims about yourself. Such testimony is not valid, right? So the Pharisees are the religious leaders of their day. They're really religious people. They, 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 they know the Old Testament. And, um, and they tell Jesus, like, you're making this claim, but that's the testimony of one person. And one, the testimony of one person is, is not really valid. Um, you know, it, 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 we have this incident at work where um, something happened. It wasn't a big deal, but one guy says one thing and another guy says another thing. And, and I tell everybody else, I'm like, the truth is in the middle, right? And, um, and, and I, I'm sure they both believe what they say, but it would be really different, it, different if, if one had a, a what? A, a, a witness, right? And, and, and a few weeks ago, we were at Easter Sunday, and I shared with you five reasons on why we believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And one of them was the eyewitness account. And, and I taught you guys this. Let's see if anybody remembers, because I'm such a great teacher, and y'all remember everything that I say. Not one amen, just laughter. Okay. Anyways, what is better than one witness? What is better than one eyewitness? Two eyewitnesses. And what's better than two eyewitnesses? Muchos, right? Three, four, five, ten, right? Uh, and and uh, 8 a.m., I said, what's better than one eyewitness? And, and, so, and the guy sitting in front showed me his, his phone, right? Like video. And I'm like, oh, yeah, that video's better than, right? So these guys tell Jesus, like, man, you're the witness about yourself. Such testimony is not valid. Verse 14, Jesus told them, my tongue's all tied from Spanish services. Jesus told them, these claims are valid even though I make them about myself. For I know where I came from and where I'm going. Remember that because we're going to touch on this. For I know where I came from and where I'm going, but you don't know this about me. 15. You judge me by human standards, but I do not judge anyone. And if I did, my judgment would be correct in every respect because I am not alone. Remember, they're like, you're witness. You're the only witness. He goes, I'm not alone. The Father who sent me is with me. Now notice Father is with a capital F so that he's talking about our Heavenly Father. He's talking about God. Verse 17 says, your own law says that if two people agree about something, their witness is accepted as fact, right? So Jesus says, they're right, one isn't enough, but if there's two, verse 18 says, I am one witness and my Father who sent me is the other. So Jesus is telling them there were two. Verse 19, where is your Father, they asked Jesus. They asked and Jesus answered, since you don't know who I am, you don't know who my Father is. If you knew me, you would also know my Father. In, in another occasion, one of the disciples of Jesus told Jesus, just show us the Father. Just show us the Father. That's enough if you will show us the Father. And Jesus responded with, you haven't figured it out? To know me is to know my Father. 21 years ago, when, when I was a, 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 the young pastor, right, uh, you know, 21 years ago, we started Radio Alleluia, and uh, we would sell time in Radio Alleluia, and so... Uh, you know, people would come to buy time. I don't remember what we charged, so I'm just going to make up a number. Like, we would charge like $50, just to keep numbers around. $50, half an hour, $100 a whole hour. So, like, you know, a minister or someone would come in and they would say, like, oh, we want to buy time. And I, in those days, I was, uh, I was the one who would do the contracts. And I'm like, okay, so how much? Well, $50, half an hour, $100 an hour. And then they would always tell me, like, oh, no, it's mucho, right? That's too much. My favorite response was always, like, compared to what? Like, I mean, like, compared to what? We were the only Spanish Christian radio station at that time. Like, compared to what? And, um, but anyways, they would, then they would say, oh, your father and I, we've been really good friends for 20 years. Like, your father and I, we're really good friends for 20 years. I'm going to talk to him. He'll give me a better deal. And, and in my mind, in my mind, I would think, like, you and my pops have been friends, good friends for 20 years, and I'm barely meeting you? That's weird. Like, I think about my good friends. I know their kids. 
right? I think about my good friends. I was at their wedding. I know about my good friends. I presented <laughs> their kids in, in church, right? I think about my good friends, you know, I'm, I'm pretty aware of like birthdays and stuff like that. You know, every once in a while, I might show up to, to someone's uh, uh, birthday party. Um, but, uh, I, you know, you, you understand what I'm saying. It's one thing to know someone. It's another thing to really know someone, right? And, uh, and sometimes we get confused knowing of someone and knowing someone, right? We might know of someone, but we don't really know them, right? You know, and especially in the age of social media, we might think we know people because we, we, we follow them on the gram and, um, and, and they may follow us, but, you know, you're really knowing. And this is what Jesus is telling the Pharisees. These are the most religious people of his day. And he's like, no, no, no. You guys think you know the Father, but you don't know the Father because you don't even recognize the Son. If you knew the son, you would know the father. If you knew the father, you would know the son. And so th this, this is what Jesus is telling them. Now, ver let's go back to verse um, 12. All right. So verse 12, this is where our focus is. I am the light of the world, right? Jesus is the light of the world. And every, every time I think about like darkness and light and darkness, I, I, I remember when I was a kid and um, we, I just passed by this uh, yesterday. We we're going down 225. And over off of 225, um, was our second sanctuary. And, and the second sanctuary uh, of La Iglesia del Pueblo was probably the size of, the second church building was probably the size of this sanctuary, um, ju just this part in here. And, um, and so one day I asked my dad, you know, dad, you know, did, did you know that when I was a kid, did you know I would grow up to be a pastor? Because my mom knew, like my mom, when she found out I was, she was pregnant with me, she said, it's gonna be a boy, I'm gonna name him Reuben, he's gonna be a pastor. You know, but my dad's faith, that's something different, right? So I'm like, Dad, did you know, right? And I remember my dad told me, he's like, I didn't know. He's like, I don't, I don't know nothing about that. He goes, but what I do know is that you would always be around me more than your siblings, right? And, um, and so he, uh, I used to go with my dad, like he would go to his office and I would go with him to church. And so the church was something like this sanctuary, like the whole church was like this sanctuary. And now in the back to the side were like the main doors. And then like up here, like behind the, the pulpit was his office. And then there was a door here to go up. And I remember I was about seven or eight years old, had this little remote control car, Jeep, um, which is the only Christmas present my dad has ever bought any of us. And he bought it for this guy right here. My sister's in the back, Matt. Anyways, um, and so I have this Jeep and I'm at the church. And so then he comes, yeah, Vamanos, right? You know, he comes down, Vamanos. And so he goes, go make sure the doors are locked. And I'm like seven or eight years old. And I'm like, bet. So I take off running. And you know, I mean, I'm probably like the fastest human being on the planet at that time. I mean, I'm faster than a gazelle. I like go down there. I yell back, the doors are locked. So he goes, well, come back. So I'm running back and he turns the lights off on me. And here I am, and that church had, it didn't have benches, it had chairs. And so I'm like running down this aisle and he turns the lights and I stop and I start walking like this. And so he yells and he's like, apurale, like hurry up. And I yell back, I'm all mad crying. I'm like, will you turn off the lights? And so when I finally get over there, he's like, what took you so long? And I'm like, will you turn off the lights? And he goes, well, I thought you were a ninja. <laughs> so I was, I just hadn't gone through that part of the training yet, right? You know, like that, turn off the lights now, I'll run like that. Which remind me, I mean, this is, this is like how life comes full circle. So a couple of days ago, Rebecca's playing and Raquel, comes, snatches a toy out of her hand, takes off running, so Rebecca gets up and she's like, Ugh! and so, you know, these are two, two and three-year-old kids, right? And so Rebecca, three-year-old, starts chasing the two-year-old, and uh, we live in a small house, but we have like this one hallway, and it's, 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 it's divided from like the living room, dining room, and so the lights are off. So Raquel, she don't care. She's two years old. She's a, she was born in, in, in the pandemic. She don't care about stuff, right? So she's like running in the dark, and so Rebecca turns into the hallway, takes a few steps, sees that it's dark, and literally stops like this, turns around, turns on the light, and then goes around and I go, she's so smart, three years old, she's so smart, she knew to turn on the light. You know, usually when we talk about darkness, uh, when we talk about, you know, the light, we, we have this, you know, understanding, you know, darkness, you know, I'm, you know, some parents tell their kids, like, nothing happens, nothing, nothing good happens after nine, you better be home, because nothing good happens after nine, right? You know, the darker it gets, you know, we, we realize that the more evil is out there, right? The, 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 you know, if we think of light as God, then we think of everything opposite 
you know, of God being in the darkness, being in those hidden places, right? And so, you know, some of us, you know, you, you may be going through a dark moment, you know, and, 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 and a dark moment could be, could be a, a whole plethora of different things, you know, probably a, a dark moment in your life is that you and your spouse, you and your husband, you and your wife, you're going through a rough patch, you know, or maybe your kids that you raise in church, you know, they're just kind of, you know, being a little rebellious and, and, and you're like, well, where, where did I go wrong? And you feel like you're going through, through a dark moment, you know, uh, m- maybe the doctor gave you some bad news or, or um, you know, m- gas is going up and milk is going up and, and prices are going up and, and you're having some s- sort of difficulties with, with your finances and, and you feel like, man, this is a dark moment. You know? uh, some of you may, may deal with depression. And sometimes when we deal with uh, depression, it feels like we're going through, through a dark patch, through a dark moment. I, th- I think it was Winston Churchill who would describe his depression as, as, a, uh, as, as a, a black puppy. And he, and he would tell people like, hey, my little black dog is with me, right? In other words, that he was going through, you know, an episode of, 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 of depression. And, um, and, and, and sometimes it's, it's really hard and, and it's, it's, it's really rough. And, and oftentimes you'll go from darkness to more darkness, to even a darker moment before you actually get to the light, okay? uh, before you get to the light. And so last week we learned about Moses. And one of the things about Moses, whenever he comes and, um, and, and tells the people like, hey, God is going to free us, is that God sends 10 plagues to Israel, right? 10 plagues to Israel. And the ninth plague, that, I'm sorry, 10 plagues to Egypt. And the ninth plague that God sends to Egypt was darkness, right? And you would think like, well, it doesn't get any more darker than darkness, but it does because the 10th plague was what we call Passover. And the firstborn of, of the Egyptians or the firstborn of those who didn't put the blood on the post of, of their doorpost, um, the blood of the lamb on the doorpost died. And, and scripture says that, that never before has there been such a moment of, of crying and yelling and wailing where people lost their firstborns in their household, the firstborn of their servants, the firstborn of, of, their, of their cattle or whatever they had, right? And, and so it was a horrible thing. But then it went from dark to darker to the light and that God frees his people and they were able to go free. When Jesus is on the cross, I mean, we would describe that as a dark moment on the cross. And uh, the Gospel of Luke, chapter 23, in verse 44, tells us that by this time it was about noon and darkness fell across the whole land until three o'clock. Can you imagine walking out and there being darkness outside? Walking out of Pueblo, as you were walking into Pueblo Church for 12 o'clock service, darkness outside. Not, not just that it's, it's cloudy, but darkness. Verse 45 says, the light from the sun was gone. It was so dark. It wasn't cloudy. It was so dark at noon from 12 to 3 that the light from the sun was gone. And suddenly the curtain in the sanctuary of the temple was torn down the middle. Verse 46 says, then Jesus shouted, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And with those words, he breathed his last breath. So here we have Jesus on the cross, a dark moment, literally dark. The sun is covered, no light from the sun, dark. Jesus says, Father, I entrust my spirit into your hands. And then he breathed, he breathed his last breath and died. Man, that's dark to darker. But you know how the story ends. He's buried and three days later, the light shines in that God resurrects Jesus from the dead. I don't, I don't know what you're going through, but, but I know that there's one thing that we all have in common from up here all the way to back there to the person that's opening the door is that we all walk through dark moments in our lives. We all walk through dark moments in our lives. And I want to encourage you this afternoon to not lose hope because no darkness can stop the light of God. Right? No darkness can stop the light of God. And always remember that the darker the moment, the greater the glory, all right? The darker the moment, the greater the glory. John chapter eight, verse 14. There in the middle of everything, it says, for I know where I came from and where I am going, all right? For I know where I came from and where I'm going. I'm gonna invite you in this moment to open up your Bible to Genesis chapter one and Revelations chapter 21. 
Genesis chapter 1 is the first chapter of the first book of the Bible. All right. You don't need to go to the index to look for it. All right. Just go to the first book, first chapter. Right. Revelations chapter 21. You don't need to go to the index. I'm going to help you out. Is the last book of the Bible. Chapter 21 is the chapter before the last chapter of the Bible. If you're staring at maps right now, you went too far. You need to back up. All right. Revelations chapter 21. So Genesis chapter 1, Revelations chapter 21. So Jesus says, hey, look, I know where I came from and I know where I am going. Okay. You're at home. All of a sudden you hear a knock. You open the door and someone's there. It looks like an hermano. Has a Bible that looks like your Bible. And uh, they talk like they were hermanos. But let me tell you, they're not hermanos and they're not primos. They're actually enemies of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because they bring with them a false doctrine. And the false doctrine that they bring with them is that Jesus is not the creator, but that Jesus was created. Right? They bring with them the doctrine that Jesus was not the creator, but that Jesus was created. Right? Uh, they, many believe that Jesus came into existence 2,000 years ago when he was born through the Virgin Mary and the Holy Spirit and was laid in that manger. Others believe that, oh, he was, uh, he was created like the angels were created. And, and then later on, he, he came to, to earth. No, 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 no. John starts his gospel by saying, in the beginning was the word, speaking of Jesus, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And then he says, all things were created through the word and without the word, nothing would have been created. Colossians says that everything was created by him for him, right? By him for him. Jesus, using these phrases, I am, is telling us like, look, back in Moses' days, you know, uh, to his audience, he's talking about 1,200, 1,300 years ago, uh, years before he says I am. He's like, man, I was already there. Then he says, I know where I came from. And for us to have an understanding of where he came from, we've got to go to the beginning. And in the beginning, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, we read, In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was formless, empty, and darkness covered the deep waters. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. Then he separated the light from the darkness. Verse 2, back to verse 2. The earth was formless and empty and darkness. All right. The earth represents us, right? The earth represents us. In, in Radio Alleluia, they sing a song, Eres Polvo y Nada Más, right? And it's, it, it, maybe some of you have heard in, in funerals, or at least in movies. In I've never heard this in a real funeral, but I've seen it in a lot of funerals and movies and TV shows where someone will say, he came from the dust to the dust he shall return, right? You know, what are, what are they talking about? They're, they're talking about that, you know, God created Adam from the earth, right? From dirt. And then he blew life into him. And one day that life leaves and that body decays, goes back to, to the earth, goes back to, to the dirt, right? And so earth represents us. Now this is earth without the light, right? This is earth without the light. It is formless, empty, and darkness, and in darkness, right? Formless, empty, and darkness. Some Bibles might say um, uh, void, empty empty and in darkness, right? Void, empty, and in, in darkness. How, how, many, how many here have a one, all right? How, how many here have a one? Uh, 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 let me help you out if you're not. I'm not sure if I have a one. A one dollar bill, Pastor? No, that isn't what I'm talking about. And um, save that one for the offering. Uh, the, the one is that, that there's someone in your life that you're praying for them, 
you want them to come to know Jesus, um, you're, you're trying to serve them, um, you invite them to church, you're, you're doing whatever you can to, to show them the way of Jesus Christ. How many have a one in, in, in their lives, all right? Everybody should have a one in your life. If you don't have a one in your life, you need, if you don't have a one in your life, you're like, Pastor, I can't think of one. Come talk to me, I'll give you one of mine. I have plenty. Anyways, um, there, there's a hermano, he comes and he, and he uh, 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 Daniel's dad, Hebrew's dad, and he tells me, he goes, Pastor, I have five ones, right? You know, like that. And, and sometimes they'll show up to church and he'll tell me, that's one of them, you know, like that. And, 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 uh, or, you know, there's guys that are coming to church and he's like, that, he used to be one of my ones, but, I, you know, he's here now, so now I'm moving on to another one, right? We all should have a one, right? This is the life of your one without Jesus, formless, empty, and in darkness, this is your life. This is my life before we came to know Jesus. It was formless, empty, and in darkness, All right? Who's here ever heard of Tom Brady? Anybody ever heard of Tom Brady? Okay, good, six of us. All right, Tom Brady, I'm just kidding some more. Tom Brady, um, you know, I don't know what, seven Super Bowls? He's won seven Super Bowls, six or seven, six, seven, something like that. Anyway, um, when he won like four, when, he, when he, he had already won like four Super Bowls, I was listening to this pastor yesterday giving a teaching, and, and I, I haven't read this, I'm, I'm, I'm going to believe this pastor. He says that Tom Brady was in an interview. Now, now Tom Brady, all right, I mean, this, this is, he's, he's considered perhaps the greatest quarterback in the history of football, all right? World famous athlete, super duper good shape, all right? He's a really handsome man. I mean, Tom Brady is a handsome man. His wife, he didn't just marry a model, he married a supermodel. Right? <laughs> he's got so much money, he's never gonna worry about money. He, his kids will probably never ask, how much is hamburger meat this week? His grandkids are not gonna worry that milk went up another dollar, like, you know, or that gas is, you know, $4 a gallon. Like, I mean, plenty of money. Right? And he's got all of these things, yet in an interview, when after he had won like four Super Bowls, in an interview, he says, like, I have all these things. He's like, but this can't be it. Like, this can't be it. There's got to be more to life than this. Why? Because he's formless, empty, and in darkness without the light, without Jesus, right? And here's a man that by every standard of the world, we would say he's successful, right? Yet he recognizes that, hey, formless, I'm empty and in darkness, right? But then God said, let there be light, right? And the light came to this world that was formless, empty, and in darkness, and God spoke light, and the light was good, and then God separated darkness from light. That's what it says in verse 4, I believe. Um, then he separated the light from the darkness, right? So where there is darkness, or let me say it this way, where there is light, darkness cannot coexist. Where there is light, darkness cannot coexist. Why? Because God has separated the light from the darkness. Okay, this, remember Jesus said, I know where I came from. He was there. He's the light. When God spoke, he's the word. John says in the beginning was the word he spoke. Okay, now let's go to Revelation 21 because Jesus says, I know where I'm going, right? I know where I came from and I know where I am going. Okay, get, get ready to say um, amen. Okay, get ready to say amen. When you go to Jerusalem, some of y'all, man, I didn't say amen. And then when you don't go on the trip, you're like, oh, man, I wish I could have gone. You should have said amen. When I, I even prepped you. I even said, get ready to say. And then you still missed it. Like, man, there's, there's not a lot I can do for some of you. But anyways, I'll help you out again. Next year, when you, know, when you go to Jerusalem. All right, there we go. Amen. All right, now we're on. All right. When you go to Israel, when you go to Jerusalem, one of the things you'll see in Jerusalem is the temple. It's, that's like, a, like a, a thing to go. You know, when we remodeled this church, the, this uh, sanctuary years ago, we put this brick 
I mean, it was not with this intention. It just started happening like that. People started putting their prayers in, in, in the brick. That's why all those little, one day this guy told me, oh, pastor, you know, there, there's a ceiling you're supposed to put in there. I'm like, no, 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 that, that's not to support the brick. That's, those are people's prayers. And he's like, oh, my bad. So anyways, you know, some people started putting their prayers in there. That, that, that's what they do at the temple. Like people go pray and then they put their, their little petition, they'll write on a piece of paper and they'll put it in, in the cracks uh, of, of, the, of the brick wall, right? And, um, but let me, let me tell you that in Revelations 21, John, who wrote the Gospel of John that we've been studying, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John and Revelation, he sees not Jerusalem, but he sees a new Jerusalem, which we would call heaven, right? He sees the new Jerusalem. And he says this about the new Jerusalem, John chapter, uh, Revelations 21, verse um, 22. I saw no temple in the city, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. 23. And the city has no need of sun or moon, for the glory of God illuminates the city, and the Lamb is, it's like the Lamb is Jesus Christ who said, I am the light, right? I'm the light of the world. And so he says, look, there's no sun, there's no moon in the New Jerusalem, because God's glory illuminates the city, and the Lamb is its light. Verse 24, the nations will walk in its light, and the kings of the world will enter into the city in all their glory. Its gates will never be closed at the end of the day because there is no night there. Why is there no night there? Because there's no need for the sun or the moon because of God's glory lights up the place, right? And, and the lamb, Jesus, is the light. Verse 26 says, All the nations will bring their glory and honor into the city. Nothing evil will be allowed to enter nor anyone who practices shameful idolatry and dishonesty, but only those whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life, right? Um, let me tell you that one day, way, way down the road, one day you and I were going to die, right? From the dust we came to the dust we will return. And it's not gonna matter that you were a member of Pueblo's church. And it's not going to matter that you told people that you were of the religion of Christianity, that you were a Christian. And it's not going to matter that you were a Republican or a Democrat. And it's not going to matter that, um, you know, whatever else you can think of, you know, that your name was on a diploma or a degree or two or three or five, or ten, whatever. None of that's going to matter. The one thing that's going to matter is that rather or not your name is written in the book of life. That's what's going to matter. Is, is your name written in the book of life? And the only way that you and I can have our name written in the book of life is that we would walk in the light that we would have the light in us. So Jesus says, I know where I came from. And we saw in the beginning, like, hey, there was darkness and it was empty and it was void. And, and then Jesus shows up on the scene. Let there be light. And there was light and the light was good. And then Jesus says, and I know where I'm going, right? He's the light of this new Jerusalem. Now let's think about this. How do we go from a world of darkness, empty, void, and dark? How do we go from a world that's empty, void, and dark to a city where the sun and the moon are not necessary because the glory of God, right? How do we go from a world, which many of us are walking in a world, empty, void, and in darkness, to a city where the sun, the moon, and light switches and flashlights are not necessary. You don't even need the flash on your camera if you want to take a picture because of the glory. That was a joke. You probably not going to take pictures in heaven. <laughs> Anyways, because the glory of God lights up the whole place. How do we do that? Okay, I'm gonna share with you four truths, okay? The first thing is that we must walk toward the light, all right? We must walk toward the light. John chapter eight, verse 12, Jesus spoke to the people once more and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you have the light that leads to life. We've got to walk toward the light. 
I mean, I told you the story of Rebecca Rose. Raquel, you know, she's a COVID kid, born in middle of COVID. She just kept on running. But Rebecca saw that there was darkness and er, put the brakes, ran back, turned on the light, and then continued, right? Walk toward the light. Now, for many of us, we, we would think, oh, pastor, that's common sense. No, it's not common sense. It's not common. If it's common sense, we all would do it, but we don't. Instead, we take steps toward the darkness. Hey, look here on Facebook, see, you know, you're, you're about to go to your 20 or something. Well, Pueblo Church is really young. You're about to go to your 10-year um, high school reunion, 20-year high school reunion. you old like me, 50th. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not that old. Anyways, um, you know, you're going to 10, 20, 30-year high school. Yeah. I, w I wonder what he's up to these days. I wonder what she's up to. Uh, you you ha happily married, but you're looking up your, your ex from high school. And, you know, you know, it's just a little hi. Just a little hello. Took a little step toward darkness. Right? Some of you, you know, uh, August is going to come around, and you got two, three kids going to school, and things been a little bit tight. But at work, you know, at work, you know, they have all these office supplies and they have a bunch of pens, right? And I mean, it's a big company and look at all these pens. They ain't never going to use these pens. Uno se van a echar a perder, right? So, and, you know, so I'm just going to take me, you know, a couple of handful for me, for me, for when they go to school. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, everybody else, you done, you done took a little step in the darkness. Remember uh, this guy from church called me, and I don't, I don't do counseling. Please don't call me for counseling. I'm horrible at counseling. I have a master's degree in psychology, and I'm still horrible at counseling. Please don't call me for counseling. I'm just going to tell you forgive and move on, right? And most of you don't want to hear that, so please don't call me for counseling. But anyways, this guy called me. He was in a certain situation, and, and I told him, hey, man, well, you, you, you've got to do this. You know, you, you, and, um, and, and I told him what, you know, what he had to do, and, and he's like, man, he's like, Maybe I think the best thing, and he literally told his pastor this. I know you're not going to believe this. I can't make this stuff up. He literally told his pastor, man, maybe the best thing for me to do is just to give a little white lie. Right? Well, I didn't even know lies had color. <laughs> I don't know. Little, 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 let me, tell me in Spanish. Una mentirita blanca. See, the problem with the little white lie is that someone calls you out on it. And all of a sudden, you've got to say it like a gray light, right? You've got to go a little bit on the hue, a little bit darker, went from white to gray, right? And then, you know, someone's like, whoa, whoa, someone wants more details, or that didn't make sense what you said last time, and now you're saying, you know, and so now they're pushing on you, or they're asking more, and now you've got from like white to gray to black, right? You went white, you know, light, dark, darker, Right? And, and you're just, and you're moving in that direction. So many of us, we, 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 we know, but, but we think, well, you know, it's kind of like the swimming pool. I'm just going to put my toes in. Pastor, I'm just putting my toes in. But before you know it, your, your, your ankle is in. Before you know it, you, you're actually sitting on the steps, mojándote los pies, right? You know, just like, you know, with your feet in the water, right? Before you know it, someone comes playing around and shoves you, and all of a sudden, you're, you're in the water, no, no, no. Turn on the light. Jesus is the light. Walk toward the life. Light. Walk toward the light. Right? The second one is keep the light in you. Keep the light in you. We were at my mom's house, uh, at my parents' house for, um, yes, little, little. last Sunday after church, we went to my parents' house for Mother's Day. And uh, Rebecca, which was, you know, Rebecca and Raquel, they're putting on a show, and I don't know, they're just being, they're being typical two, three-year-old girls, right? Just loud, loud. They're so loud, like their older cousins, who are all girls, loud, right? And all the boy cousins are just looking at them like, you know, like, and looking at me, like, make them be quiet. And I'm looking at them like, yeah, I'll make them be quiet. And we're just like, you know. And, uh, and so anyways, they're so loud. And, um, and so Rebecca and Raquel, they're singing. They're making up songs. They're putting on a show. And uh, it looked like Raquel was rapping for a minute there. And, um, and so one of my nieces, I don't know who it was, asked Rebecca, Rebecca, she's three, right? Rebecca, where's Jesus? And she's like, uh, and she's like, Rebecca, where's Jesus? And she's like, Oh, 
he's in my heart. And then she like continued. I'm like, she's so smart. She knew to turn on the light instead of running in the darkness. And she knows that she needs to keep the light to where? In her heart. Right? Let me tell you that Jesus, he's a total gentleman. He's a total gentleman. He's not going to kick the door down to enter in, into your life. He's not going to force his way in. In Revelations chapter 3, verse 20, Jesus says these words. He says, look, I stand at the door and I knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and we will share a meal together as friends. Right? It's not enough to just walk toward the light, but we must keep the light in us. Oftentimes, Jesus used these phrases, abide in me, abide in me, right? Abide in me, you and me and me and you, right? In other words, you and Jesus and Jesus in you. So we must walk toward the light, we must keep the light in us, and we must keep walking in the light. Right? Walk in the light. Turn on the light. I, you know, years ago, year, many, many years ago, my dad, he came to church, you know, to minister, and he had, he had a black guy. Right? He had a black guy and, a, and like a bruise on his nose, and everybody was like, man, for sure, la hermana Villarreal gave him a right hook, right, you know, like that, you know. My mom always does this, like she's a champ like that. Like, they saw the estilo Tyson like that, you know? you know. You know what happened was that he was walking in the house, and you know when, when you, por no prender las luces, you know when, when you're walking in the dark, how you do this, right? You, you do this, you, you're walking like this. When I was running like that ninja, and then they turned off the lights on me, I had to walk. The, the reason I walked back is because, man, you never know, the devil could have moved a chair. Right? And so that's why I walked back. It was not that I was scared. But anyway, you know, you put your hands like this. So he was walking and there was a door open and he walked right, the door went right through his hands. He didn't feel it. And wham, just like right on his face. Right? Prende la luz. Pagamos el bill. Right? Like, I mean, turn on the light. Turn on the light. Now, there's a lot of, most of us here are, are, are Hispanics and, and uh, you, you might have grown up in a house that had this, had this one, you know, I'm sure two things that most of you Hispanic houses had. One was that, that picture of that old man drinking coffee praying. You know what I'm talking about? Anybody have that picture in their house? It's like an older man, he's like praying and there's like a he coffee and a Bible. I'm the only one who had that in their house. Oh, thank you. Over here to my right. All right. And upstairs. Thank you. Thank you. For a minute there, I was like, whoa, am I, am I colorblind? <laughs> like, what's going on? Like, okay. Anyways, the other one that we had at El Pan de Vida, right? It was this little plastic container on the table, little, like about this. And it had these little Bible scriptures in it. You're with me, Abraham, right? Thank you. Y'all had both. Y'all are like me. We were raised in houses that had both. We were, we were raised in holy houses, right? You know, and so it was called the bread of life. And it, it was like this plastic little container that looked like a loaf of bread. And then it had like these little um, cards in it. And you would pull one out before you eat. You would pull one out and you would read a Bible verse because not only by bread shall man live, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. And so we'd have like a spiritual appetizer, and then we would eat my mom's, you know, carne guisado con tortillas y chile, right? You know, giving you a hint, mom, for this week. Anyways, right? And so, uh, you know, we had, let, let me tell you, uh, you guys are more modernized, so y'all don't, you're like, what is he talking about? Okay, some of you subscribe a follow on Instagram, like a daily Bible verse something, right? And so as you're scrolling, oh, I read a Bible verse, you know, like, that's not enough. That's not enough. And that, that's not walking with the light. That's like walking with a match, right? You know, like when it's dark and you turn on the match and you turn on, all of a sudden that match burns out. <laughs> it burns your fingers and then you got to turn on another. another. See, some of y'all walking with a match. No, turn on the light. You need the light in your life. And Psalms 119, verse 105 says, Your word, God's word, is a lamp to guide my feet and a light for my path. Let me tell you that if you're not in Scripture regularly, reading regularly, asking God, God, what are you telling me? What are you showing me? God, what needs to change in my life? What do I need to pray for? What do I, what, what, what do I need to allow you to work on in my life? Then you're walking in darkness. 
You're not walking with the light. You're walking with darkness. You need to keep walking in the light. Let me tell you that I've been to places that I know. I, I, my own backyard. Like I know my backyard. And I've tripped and I've fallen in my backyard because it was dark. I've tripped and I've fallen in my own backyard because it was dark. And I've been to places that I don't know. I've never been there before. And I've walked and, and there's rocks and there's ant piles and there's mud and there's dirt. There might be a little creek or something. And I don't fall. Why is it that in my own backyard I fall, but in places that I don't know I don't fall is because in my own backyard, I'm like, I don't need a light. It's my backyard. But somewhere that I don't know, pull out my cell phone. I'll turn on that light. And how am I walking? I'm letting the light guide my feet, guide my path. The word of God. Remember what I told you, how did John begin his gospel? In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And through this word, all things were created. The word of God. Jesus is the word of God, right? The word of God. We need to be in it. We need to walk toward the light. We need to walk toward Jesus. We need to keep the light in us. We need to keep Jesus in us. And we need to keep walking in the light. We need to constantly have the words of God in us, guiding us, right? guiding us. There's, there's a verse that says, and I will tell you, this is the way, right? Where God will tell us this is the way. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. This is the way. In other words, through his word, you, you'll have revelation and you'll know like, hey, this is, this is, we're going in the right path. We're going in the right direction because this is God's word. Finally, last one, All right? Walk with others who are walking in the light, right? God didn't save any of us to be a lone ranger. God didn't save any of us to be a lone wolf, all right? We must walk with others who are walking in the light, right? We must have Christian friends. If, if your family serves the Lord, that's a tremendous blessing. If, if your family is sincerely serving the Lord, you're married to someone who's serving the Lord, your kids serve the Lord, your siblings serve the Lord, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a tremendous blessing. I don't go to family get-togethers and I'm tempted like, oh man, what if, what if they have a beer? Like, you know, what, that, what, you know, what if they're smoking pot in the back? You know, like, I'm not tempted by those things in my, when our family gets together, you know? Like, like we're, we're not tempted. Why? Because my, my family serves the Lord, right? And so it, it, that's important. But some of you, you're, that's not the same. Some of you, you're the first one in your family to serve the Lord, all right? Some of you, the first one. Well, then you, you need to make friends in church. You, you, you need to have friends who are other believers. I want to encourage you that if you didn't sign up last time that we had the discipleship class, sign up in August and, and you'll spend 12 weeks with, with other believers here at church, um, learning about the Bible, learning, uh, getting to know people. And um, because we were not, God didn't, God didn't save you to walk alone. God saved you to be part of his church. Right. And the church is many members, but one church, one body. All right. We were saved to be a part of the church. You know, serve, serve, serve. This uh, yesterday, uh, we sent um, f uh, four. All right, thank you. Finally, someone gave me the number, right? I've been asking every service. Uh, yesterday, we sent four uh, men from our church to go and help out. Um, there, there's a organization, a world famous called um, Habitat for Humanity. And we sent four men from our church to go help build a ramp um, at this a trailer of a, of a low-income family. And so here's some pictures and, and a video of what the men did yesterday. Look at you. Do you like it? <laughs> look at you. Oh my goodness, look at the smile on that face. <laughs> yes. Big smile. <laughs> come on, come on. You can do it. So our um yeah, let's just praise God. The um uh the director here in our area for Habitat Humanity, uh name is Leah and she sent a message to Emily saying that um that the men built it in record time, that four hours they built that entire ramp and that um, 
every time they have um, projects. Uh, we're, we're probably the first church that she calls because she's always excited with people from La Iglesia del Pueblo or Pueblo's Church go and work because we have, we have some of the best volunteers that are out there serving in the community. Can you imagine the bond between those four men sweating together, helping a needy family? Pass me a hammer, right? Pass me a hammer. Hey, hey, pass me, pass me some water, right? You know, like, can you imagine the bond that they created over those four hours that um, they were there working? Th that's what being the church is all about, right? If, if, you're, if you're off alone, you're going to get picked off, right? The enemy is going to pick you off. Why do you think Jesus leaves the 99 for the one? Because the one is in danger. Why can Jesus leave the 99? Because the 99 together are protected, right? Walk toward the light, which is Jesus. Keep the light, who is Jesus, in you. Keep walking in the light. Keep the Word of God uh, constantly walking in it. And then walk with others who are walking in the light. Be part of the 99. Let me pray for you so we can be dismissed this afternoon. Father God, I thank you for everyone that today said present here at Pueblo's Church. I thank you for your word, and I pray, Lord, that your word and the Son, your Son Jesus, would take a grip of our hearts. Help us, Father, to walk toward the light. Some of us are, are in dark areas in this moment. Some of us are, are in darker areas. Some of us are, are in areas that we don't even see. We don't even know where the light is anymore because we've gone so far off the path. Call us back, Lord. Call us back. Father, help us to keep the light in us. May Jesus abide in us as we abide in him. Help us, Father, to, to renew a love and a hunger for your word, to read it and study it, to, to come to church and, and pay attention in the preaching that we would be able to keep walking in the light. And then, Father, I pray for Pueblo's Church that everyone here would have a family member or friend that they can walk together in this walk of serving you and worshiping you and praising you, walking in the light, that your name would be honored and glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, in the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Let's get the Lord.